All right, back of another mock draft. I did one on my. I, I think I'm going to do a mock. I mean, I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to do this, but my idea is to try to do a mock draft like every day leading up to the draft or at least uh, some kind of, you know, uh, thing leading up to the draft involving mock drafts. So, yeah, this mock draft, the kind of what I'm doing here is I already made one on what I would do, but I did that without trades. So I decided now let's do one with trades. If there were trades, what would I do? Well, let's get into it. So, first two picks are still going to be the same. I think that, you know, Caleb Williams, and I also think uh, Drake May, even with trades, I don't really see anything changing there. Number three, though, I would be willing to trade. I think a trade here makes sense. So now we got to figure out exactly which trade we want to make. So this is what I decided to go with for this trade. I'm going to have the Patriots and Vikings trade. I think this has been speculated before, but it, it you know, I've heard people talk about this, but it makes sense. The Vikings traded to get another first round pick here to have pick 23 along with pick 11. They're giving both of those for number three. They're also trading back in 2025. So the Vikings, uh, you know, they're giving up a first rounder. The Patriots are giving back a second rounder. So there's going to be kind of that jump there. Um, I'm just going to force trade, but it seems like it's, you know, says it's good. There's a good chance it could be, uh, you know, accepted. So, okay. So that is the, uh, that is where we have that. Let's go to the draft a player. They are obviously going to select Joe Alt. No, I'm kidding. Obviously, you're going to select the quarterback if you're doing that. So let's put Daniels there, which wouldn't be my pick. So I guess this isn't exactly what I would do, but kind of what I would do. I guess I'll say it's each, uh, it's what I would do for each pick. Now, if there's a trade, that's going to be a little bit different, I suppose. But, uh, you know, for what for each pick, that's what I would do. Marvin Harrison's going here. For the Chargers, they're interesting as well, where it's like, you know, do you consider trading back? Is there a team that maybe would want to uh, really go after this? Uh, let's think about this. Okay, I'm just going to have some fun with this one. What if the Jets traded in a, a future first round pick to move from 10 to 5? I know the Chargers, you know, they're in a rebuild at this point. So let's force this trade. Uh, it says 51% chance of success. Let's just force it uh, and then get Malik Neighbors. Honestly, I... I legitimately think this would be a kind of a smart move by both sides. The Chargers get extra draft capital, which they could certainly use as they are kind of entering this rebuild. And for the Jets, like, listen, I know, I know you got Mike Williams and now you have Garrett Wilson, but like, I think they could use another guy. And quite frankly, you're trying to compete right now. So like, why wait? Why wait on something like that? I, I wouldn't personally, I would just go out and make, make the move. Why, you know, care about future assets. So for the Giants, do they go with, so my, you know, next player on my board would be Joe Alt, which they could do. They could do Joe Alt because, again, he is someone who is a, you know, uh, a very good offensive lineman. Yes, they do have Evan Neal, but like, at this point, like, do you really trust Evan Neal? I I just, I'm drafting Joe Alt. I'm, I'm sorry. That's what I'm doing. Uh, maybe you could trade down or something like that. But let's, if Evan Neal can be a guard or something cool, I actually, when I evaluated Evan Neal, thought maybe he was a guard. So despite his height, maybe you try that. But I don't know. I, I can't get too, too crazy about uh, some of this stuff. So uh, Tennessee Titans are another interesting team. Byron Murphy is next highest on my board. He was the player who I had uh, projected to go at that point. So that. Uh, you know, when I did my, what I would do with no trades, that's what I did. Uh, is there a team that could maybe really use uh, an interior defensive lineman? I don't really see any team trading up for that. So Baron Murphy, next highest guy on my board, we'll just select him. And I think we'll also go with uh, uh, Jerhan. I got to figure out how to pronounce his name. Newton uh, at number eight. Which brings us to number nine. Uh, somehow, Romeo Dunze has fallen all the way to number nine. So, I think the Bears are just going to you know, rush that in uh, as quick as they can. And for the Chargers at number 10, again, kind of, I feel like a big win for them. They can just get Brock Bowers, who some people have projected going as high at you know, number five where they're drafted. They get the future first round pick. Kind of a win-win for both teams. The Jets get the star uh wide receiver and the you know the Chargers still get a good player and get future assets down the line. This is now when the Patriots come in. The Patriots who traded down, which is a very Patriots thing to do, do they go quarterback here? You know, they traded down so they got the extra pick. Why not? Go after it. I mean, Michael Panix is next highest on my board, but he's he's 46. 
you you know, uh, if you really wanted him, you could wait till round two. Uh, in my, you know, what I would do mock draft, I had him going around here. So I'm going to hold off on that just to kind of mix things up a little. And let's go J.J. McCarthy to the uh, New England Patriots here at number 11. That, that's a fun uh, you know, a, a fun thing for them to do, getting a former Michigan quarterback after the last one went pretty well, I would say. So that's where they're at. And I do think there's going to be a run on quarterbacks here. Again, maybe they could have traded up and maybe that's something you do. Now that I think about it of like, try to trade with one of those teams to try and get the quarterback. Maybe I should have thought of that, but you know, didn't do that. We'll just have Bo Nix go here. I think for the Raiders at this point, all the quarterback needy teams have their quarterbacks. You could, try to just draft Michael Penix, but honestly, it might be worth it to just wait now that I'm thinking about it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have them wait on Penix a little bit because I think they can play it a little bit uh, dangerously here. And instead, I'll have them trade back with Cincinnati. Now, PFF says Cincinnati wouldn't want to trade here. Okay, so this is the trade I'm going to come up with here. The Raiders are going to trade back, wait on a quarterback for a little bit longer, get some extra draft capital, get an extra second round pick to fall back to from 13 to 18. I think they feel like they can take this risk. Maybe we'll take a little bit more than just a second, but I'm going to have to force the trade because PFF says the Bengals wouldn't want to trade up at this point, but I'm going to have them do it anyway, and I'm going to have them uh, select, you know, I'm really high in Kool-Aid McKinsky. I, I won't go there just yet. Just try to, try to keep some se- semblance of what could actually happen. I'll give them Quinion Mitchell, Mitchell here. He'll be my pick. So they trade up, kind of jump some of the other corner needy teams are able to get a uh, you know, corner as they're trying to compete for a Super Bowl right now. And uh, the, you know, uh, the Raiders are able to get some extra draft capital on top of it. The Saints, I'm going to have them go with uh, Layu Latu, who, uh, you know, I keep mocking. I feel like it makes sense. That's what I would do personally. Uh, and then for the uh, for the Indianapolis Colts in this scenario, well, uh, again, they're, they're, they're interesting. Uh, I could go with Cooper to Gene, but I'm not – this is high for Cooper to Gene. Uh, you know, I said – Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to wait on uh, Kool-Aid McKinsky because that's, you know, I'm I'm high on him, but other people aren't. But eh, this this makes sense. He'd fit that scheme so well. I'm just I'm going to I'm going to keep mocking him there, I suppose. Um, the Seattle Seahawks are next on this list. Now, the Raiders did take a chance here trading back and not going with the quarterback, uh, you know, because obviously now for Seattle, they could consider selecting that. But I think they're going to go with, you know, Talese Fuaga, who has fallen at this point. He's such a good player. I I would just, you know, kind of rush that in. We then have the uh, the Jaguars, who are another team that's in a very interesting position. Do you, uh, you know, do you trade and try to make something happen? Well, maybe. I actually don't think I would hate that for a team that could potentially really use a tackle, like say, for example, Pittsburgh, uh, maybe, or like the Rams. Do, do they decide to make a trade in that capacity? Okay, this is the trade I'm going with here. It's going to be the Jaguars and the Patriots. So the Patriots are now trading back up. You know, it's, hey, Bill Belichick isn't there anymore. It's a new era. The Patriots are going to give pick 68 and pick 137 to Jacksonville to move up, uh, you know, a handful of spots, right? Oh, I got rid of the trade. I have to do that again. That's no good. Uh, But yeah, real quick, just the, you know, uh, that's, I believe what it was, forced to trade, and then they can draft uh, the uh, tackle they want, which I guess is further on PFF's big board and a mine, but uh you know, Alou uh, Fashanu will be next on the big board there. Then we go to the Raiders, who I said, well, you know, let's wait, wait on a quarterback. I don't think we've got to wait forever, though. Panix, sixth guy on the board, but he's a good quarterback. You got extra draft capital. Let's get Panix. Let's see what happens. You know, you have backup plans if the injury thing is a real issue, so they're not, like, needing him to succeed, but it would certainly be nice if he does. And then we have the Rams, who the Rams love to trade back. You know that the Steelers want Jackson Powers Johnson. You know that's what they're hoping for. Is there another team that could maybe use him that might be willing to jump jump up? Like, for example, Jacksonville, who just traded down. Do they trade back up? Or like Tampa Bay, although I think Tampa Bay has a decent amount of needs. So I don't know if that's a move that they would make. 
I'm going to have them trade back with the Dallas Cowboys right here. Because, again, Rams love to trade back. I'm giving them an extra second. That might be high. I don't know. Uh, the PFF thing is very uh, – does not think many teams are very interested in trading for picks, which is kind of annoying because I like using that to gauge how the value is. But whatever it is, you know, don't worry about the value too much. I, I just have them trading back. We're just doing the first round here as um, the – you know, the, then they can go out and they can get the center they, they would like, Jackson Powers Johnson. You know, Pittsburgh now feels very bummed out that they were not able – to get the player that they wanted they have to scramble a little bit okay what do we do in this scenario well I don't know there's uh I think a decent consolation prize you're gonna have here let's just go Brian Thomas Jr. here I think he's a good player definitely would fit that uh you know fit what they need out of a player well and you know it's a good receiver position to need why not was one of the next highest players on my board anyway so that's a you know I think an interesting one there then we have Miami who again has several needs I think I'm just going to give them J.C. Latham, the next next high new offensive line, next highest uh, offensive lineman on my board, second highest, second next highest uh, player on my board. What's interesting is I actually have three edge rushers here for the Eagles. The Eagles definitely do not need an edge rusher. So let's let's again let's let's do a little wheel and deal right here. Um, why not Tampa Bay? Could, but again, does Tampa Bay want to jump up? Because is that worth it for them is the the question, right? Because they're probably, if they want an edge rusher, they can kind of stay pat. And honestly, even if they don't get an edge rusher, still get a good player. So I guess here's the question is, can they get someone who would be willing to make a trade here? I think you might get something like this, right? Like maybe Tampa Bay says, hey, like we're not willing to give you the usual value to move up from 26 to 22, but we'll give you like pick 92, something like that uh, to move up a little bit. And the Philadelphia Eagles kind of say, you know what, fine, uh, something like that. I don't know. Uh, maybe you could get them to kind of negotiate a little bit. Tampa Bay can then get the next highest edge rusher on their board. We'll just go with Dallas Turner. He's the highest guy here. I like Chop Chop Robertson a little better, but whatever. Uh, You know, agree to disagree on that. We then have the Jaguars, who, again, remember, have not uh, had a draft pick at this point. They've traded down, got some extra draft capital. They can, you know, they could certainly use an edge rusher. So I'll just give them Jared uh, Verse here at pick 23. And then we have the Rams who, again, uh, what do you do here? They were the ones who traded back because they wanted, uh, you know, because uh, the Cowboys wanted a center. So they get the extra draft capital, which they love to do. I'm sure they'd love to trade back again. Is, is that something they could consider doing? Honestly, it is with the Detroit Lions, I think, who are not a team that is interested in this pick, apparently. However, I am still going to have the Lions and the Rams make a trade here because the Lions could use an edge rusher. I'm going to force this trade, and I am going to give them... Again, it's one of those weird things where... I guess this is kind of a bad idea because Chop Robinson would probably still be available. But in this hypothetical world where every team has a similar draft board to the one I have, let's move a trade up. Let's give them Chop Robinson. Make sure that they can get the kind of last of, I feel like, the really good edge rusher still on the board here because they're trying to compete right now, getting a good edge rusher. And I think would fit that uh, system really well with what they're trying to do, get, get a guy who can have that speed off the edge. I'd really like that. So that's what I'm going to do there, just you know, moving up a couple of spots uh, and the Rams continue to get more draft capital which they love to do for the uh, Packers here again they could use a corner Nate Wiggins next highest guy on my board uh, I don't know it feels like you could maybe make a trade here but nothing really jumps out so let's just give him Nate Wiggins the Eagles are another team who you know they have not drafted at this point they have traded back uh, to you know get more draft picks here and now you know there's corners I'll just give him Cooper to Gene he, you know uh, PFF can finally be happy as Cooper to Gene is nine on their board he goes here at 26 uh, then we have the Cardinals who again early on they uh, they decide, decided to select Marvin Harrison Jr. they did not trade that pick away if they could get a trade back do it but again we're kind of in a weird spot now where I don't know if there is a lot of like teams really wanting to wheel and deal too much actually I, I can think of one I'm going to have the Kansas City Chiefs and Cardinals make a deal. The Chiefs give up two kind of later picks to make this uh, happen. Uh, so I will, you know, I'll, again, I'll force the trade, make it work there, as the Chiefs can then go up and get a receiver they want, get Ladd McConkey, who I think is going to be highest, the next highest on a lot of people's boards, go out and make that move. And then for the Bills, 
honestly, they could maybe be a little bit disappointed that a receiver went in front of them. Uh, I'll just have them go with Adani Mitchell here. There's other guys they could go with as well, but yeah, I think that's something I could see happening. The Rams, do they finally make a trade here? At this point, they have to be tempted to just not uh, draft in the first round again just for the fun of it, right? Because they hardly ever do. Um, I do think, though, that like going after a corner like Taron Arnold here at this point would just make sense. So, uh, no, they do select someone in the first round. You didn't have the Ravens, and there's, again, interesting, several interesting areas they could go with. Like, Grant Barton, I like, but they don't really need a, a center. Uh, this Linderbaum's pretty good, so I don't know if I would go there at this point. Could they make a trade for someone that does need a center? I think I'll, I'll just do this. I'll have Arizona and Baltimore move a couple of spots, uh, just, you know, just a couple of spots here, but for Arizona, they can get the center they want, make sure, get the best offensive lineman they want. As you know, uh, San Francisco is going to be looking for offensive linemen. We'll just do this, and then they can get uh, Graham Barton, who should be pretty good for them. Uh, and then I think the uh, you know 49ers would just go with Armarius Mims at this point. And finally, for the Baltimore Ravens, I'll just give them the highest player aboard. Uh, uh, Choi Fatanu uh, is still here. A lot of people are very high on him. I'm a little bit lower on him, but I'll have him go here. So, yeah, I mean, this is uh, earned an award. I don't know what that means, but uh, <laughs> that is my mock draft uh, at this point with trades. And it's it's a tough one. I'll be honest. This is not a great mock draft, I don't think. A lot of weird uh, things that worked out weirdly, and I probably need to think about a little bit more before I, uh, you know, I don't love every single selection I made right here. Trades trades make things very difficult. Trade makes Trades make things a lot tougher, I have learned in doing this. So let me know, what was your least favorite take I had in this one, or your favorite take, if you want to be nice. Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.